Hi, I'm Alan Ross. We're here at the RE Plus Conference and Exposition. We're talking to thought leaders about the future of the energy economy. So join us and enjoy. So I have a delight. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing somebody that is a delight to interview, but someone who I've known for a very long time and who has been very important to the APC Media, APC Technologies family. Uh, Tracy Hopkins is one of the members of the steering committee of Women in Power Systems. Um, she's got a pedigree that's just amazing. So we're going to go to this interview with Tracy. Tracy, how are you? Um, estoy bien, gracias. Oh, see, she does that. She's bilingual and she does the whole, and I, all I can say is, see. Sí. <laughs> I don't know if that means whatever you said is you have I'm a hole in your shirt. I'm doing great, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Trace, it's great to have you here. Thank you. So you and I uh, connected years ago when um, you were at S.D. Myers. You came to S.D. Myers mm -hmm. and you went into the training division, right? I did, yeah. It's what been is, over 10 years. Yeah, which is now called EPIC, mm -hmm. uh, Electric I. IP, whatever it is, what does it stand for? <laughs> Electric Power IQ. Right, and sh you were both involved heavily with uh, the transformation of that organization to global. I mm -hmm. mean, you did things, uh, I remember having you, you, you said, can I do any training? And then you started doing the training for transformer te te technology, transformer uh, yeah, life transformer cycle management. Yeah. Then you got involved in women in power systems, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah. you're you're on our steering committee. Mm -hmm. So I work for you with women in power systems. I love that. Say it again. <laughs> yes, yes. No, you have a great team that you work with, Rachel Linky and Dora and, and Marina. But uh, thank you for what you've done for women in power systems because that has also now kind of stepped into its own and is growing. Yes. And then all of a sudden I hear that uh, Tracy Hopkins has moved, and she's moved to a company called H2 Scan. I have. Tell me a little bit about that change, and just the the whole purpose and reason for changing, and how they drew you into it. Sure, sure. So it's it uh, it's been about three months now since I made the transition over there, um, and what I really uh, drew me to the company was their innovativeness in the hydrogen market and in hydrogen applications. Um, you know me, I love to learn. I know. Um, so it was a great opportunity to, to learn more. Um, so they brought me on as their sales manager. And of course, since, as I, you know, as I said this morning, I speak Spanish. So um, they have me working the Latin American markets, everything from Mexico South. And um, it's been an adventure. Uh, really been able to take the transformer knowledge that I, that I gained from SD Myers and put it more into practice here. So you, you, you're a heavy hitter in the fact that you brought a heavy hitter, Fumec. <laughs> yeah, we did an interview with uh, the director of, of Fumec yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't supposed to happen. It was just, you know him. He was wandering around, and you said, hey, you need to do an interview. Yeah. But it's, it's your positioning in the Latin America market. Number one, the understanding of the market. Mm -hmm. you, you knew that at, at SD Myers. Mm -hmm. You were applying that. The interesting thing is you are a transformer. So not only are you women in power systems, you are a transformer DGA expert. I mean, I call you that because I know you are. I know what we've had you teaching people about mm -hmm. DGA and the role of hydrogen in DGA. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you're taking that transformer expertise, the training that you've been doing, right. and you're taking it out there. But there's another part of this whole thing with H2 scan. Right. Tell me about how are you learn because you are a lifelong learner. <laughs> you learn it, you do it, and, you, and then you teach it. Right. So tell me about the other parts of H2 scan, not just the it, H2 scan is ubiquitous and most people don't realize it, but H2 scan is the best hydrogen monitoring technology. It is. Now, there are over 98, I think now 108 companies mm -hmm. that use it in either their scanners or they put they white label it. Right. So it's kind of like Intel inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have H2 scan inside. We have H2 <laughs> scan inside. And guess what we're going to do? Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be hidden inside anymore. That's right. We need the world to know that the best transformer DGA scanning for hydrogen is a company called H2 Scan. Yep. That's part of your job in Latin America. It is. It You'll is. You'll do great at it. Talk about the other parts of the hydrogen economy that H2 Scan is part of. My goodness, there are so many parts. Um, you know, there's a, a process side where we're using you know, hydrogen is used in in um, refining, maybe to remove um, uh, sulfur from from the um, 
fluids, um, you know, from the fuel. And, and um, then, of course, there's a safety side, with, which includes, you know, battery storage and... and um, it and just, refining, because <laughs> hydrogen is a byproduct, and right. you get refining. Yeah, okay. Right, right. So, so there are a lot of different sides that I'm learning about. Good. Um, it's been a, it's been a great uh, three months, kind of accelerated, yeah. you know, learning um, to get up to speed and 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 be able to really understand it more. And that's what I love about shows like like the RE Plus that I'm here at is because yeah. these shows help you help educate the market, help educate individuals that are that are in the industry as to what's coming up and what's new and, and how, you know, the hydrogen economy is really starting to to really take off. We've used hydrogen in the past in a lot of applications in industry and energy, yeah. um, but in the past it was, and it still is, um, it's 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 a bad hydrogen in a way, you know, because <laughs> gray, gray hydrogen, <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah. because yeah. because it, it produces a lot of carbon and and it has negative effects to the atmosphere and stuff. And so this move to to green hydrogen, where it it can um, be produced without those negative effects on our earth and, and our atmosphere, um, is only going to help propel things like the wind and solar renewables industry yeah. further. So. Yeah, and battery storage is a big issue. I mean, uh, lead acid batteries in a storage facility, which is right now the scale part of what we use. We don't, we do have lithium ion in some of them, but mm -hmm. uh, some of the utility scale battery storage, mm -hmm. but they're right now moving strongly to a, a battery system that causes hydrogen, the batteries, and, right. and it's very dangerous. So there, from a safety perspective, is power industry, but kind of a unique application of it. Right, yeah. and you have to be able to monitor the, the amount of hydrogen gas that's coming off of those batteries because you don't want to be in a situation where you have some sort of catastrophic failure. Right. Hydrogen, um, when you think of electrolyzers and fuel cells, mm -hmm. and that's always the thing about, well, it's coming, it's coming. I have seen more positive movement, more, yes. I call them, some of them are testing projects, but they're of such scale that you would go, oh really? The Germans have a train line mm -hmm. that they remove diesel from the mm -hmm. trains and they now use hydrogen. Right. Because it's where they can't get a lot of electricity because most of Germany is electric trains, 70%, but 30% are run on diesel. Mm -hmm. Now, one entire line is run on hydrogen. Right. Um, that was a test project that is now practical and in that's mm -hmm. happening all over the world. It is. It's happening all over the world. You know, you're not just seeing it in, in you know, the the uh, trains and and buses that are out there. You know, you're seeing it in large scale um, industrial like semi trucks and, and and that type of scale yeah. where they're starting to use hydrogen fuel, um, hydrogen fuel cells as yeah. a cleaner way to transport our products. Yeah, you're going to see it. Um, much of the industry says before we see it in EVs, mm -hmm. cars, we're going to see hydrogen on a, in the larger vehicles, buses right. and, and you know semi trailers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Trains, we see it in trains. Right. But that's got to be an exciting time for everybody in in the space. I want to switch gears again. I sure. want to go back to women in power systems. Sure. You've walked around here. You've talked to a lot of people. This is a huge conference, by the the <laughs> RE is. plus people who partnered with us. Um, I didn't know how important it would be. We've had some amazing interviews. But talk about women in power systems in the renewable, because I've interviewed a number of powerful women in renewable energy, mm -hmm. uh, green energy. Mm -hmm. Talk about this conference and what you've what you found as you walked around. You know, as I've walked through, the first thing that's, that I've really noticed was the the mix of men and women here. You know, I've been to a lot of conferences and usually it's predominant, yeah, it's male, it's a male dominated industry, it always has been, but women are starting to um, take over, <laughs> so to speak, right? <laughs> My wife took over a long time ago, Trace. We did. You, you right. took over in your house a long time ago. That's true. Ask That's your two true. sons, right? <laughs> Mom took over, yeah. <laughs> But no, it's it's so nice to see that women are moving into leadership roles and educational roles, and uh, you know, moving, just moving up in our industry and in all of the industries that are affected by by power generation or in anything like that. So I know you're an IEEE member. You've been heavelly involved with IEEE. Seagrave, uh, weren't you just at Seagrave Paris? I did. Yeah. How, how was Paris? It was great. It was great. <laughs> 
Yeah. What can you say other than uh, it was great? But right? it's work, right? You it know? is. It is work. Yeah. So that's you know a lot of people ask me all the time. Oh, you get to go here. You get to go there. And it's like, well, yeah, but I'm working. Yeah. I see the inside of the com the convention center and the inside of my hotel room. Yeah. We're in Anaheim and Disney's down the road. And, right. and they won't let me go. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm stuck in Anaheim. <laughs> I want to go back to women in power systems. Sure. Um, Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're on camera. Okay. I want you to be the hydrogen power, the hydrogen spokesperson on women in power systems mm -hmm. and help produce content, help sure. the editorialize the content of what's happening in clean, renewable energy as it relates to uh, uh, everything that we do at APC Technologies, mm -hmm. but uh, particularly from women in the hydrogen economy, women in clean and green energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love for you to be that spokesperson and we'll give you a byline. Interview people and uh, let's let's get let's this thing that. rocking and rolling. I'd I love, love to it. do that. That's great. Okay. So C Gray, I Triple E, I know you're a woman, you're a because I helped make you a woman of uh, reliability, right? Right, right. You what? were you pushed me to get my certified reliability yeah. leadership so you are a, yeah. what is that called? Women? Women in Reliability and Asset Management. YRAM. Yes, YRAM. <laughs> I, I got that. Uh, how is Maura, by the way? You could, she yeah. is doing great. Yeah. I see her, uh, you know, all over uh, all over the place doing yeah. wonderful things. Yeah, so thank you for, so uh, power, now hydrogen, clean energy, mm -hmm. women in reliability and mm -hmm. asset management. That's a big thing. Is there anything else we can have you involved in? Anything? No? You know, Wherever you want to put me, I'm, I'm, I'll do my best there. Okay. And, and you have done, and you will do, and I appreciate it. Um, in all fairness, I got to tell our audience that you and I worked together. We did at EPRA. Mm -hmm. uh, I retired in EPRA, and uh, you left. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of yeah, like yeah. I went away, and you went away. And I know it's not because I went away. Uh, but thank you for what you did at EPRA because we started an organization called the Electric Power Reli Reliability Alliance mm -hmm. in 2000 and. 18 mm -hmm. late yeah and uh, then we had a thing called covid oh yeah <laughs> so our events organization could not have any events but right. we made it through it we had in fact an event sponsored by h2scan mm -hmm. in valencia that you were a heavy part of i think mm -hmm. you organized that event right uh, and then i left and i retired on you but i love what i do now and mm -hmm. hopefully we're advancing things forward yeah. last question for you um people do what they do people have to work they have to work but there's there's a sense I get at this conference particularly mm -hmm. in many of the interviews is we're doing something that is a game changer for society for the world it is I mean decarbonization we all talk about it greenhouse gases we mm -hmm. talk about it mm -hmm. um, we talk about global climate change and all of that right I am so energized by this conference that it really can happen oh certainly so we're we're beginning to see that same thought Oh yeah, definitely. You know that there's been a there's been a challenge to get renewables where they need to be and and, and really integrate those into the current grid that we have. And I think um, by exploring and employing more green hydrogen solutions, you know, hydrogen is a great energy storage uh, resource, and and we can transport you know the energy from the solar and the wind uh, renewables to anywhere really yeah so um, I, I think that um, we're gonna see some some big change it's gonna come quick and we need to be prepared for it isn't it exciting to it know is. you have to work mm -hmm. but to know what you're working for yeah. is something that's gonna help your yeah. kids my kids my grandchildren exactly your future grandchildren you have none right now right? that's correct okay <laughs> but your future grandchildren is your boys start to uh, yeah. Tracy's boys are both, um, ex they're Marines. They're United States Marines, yes. And they currently are Marines. They currently right? are, yes. Yeah, uh, I love, I saw a picture on your laptop I walked by and you had two Marines and I thought, who are these guys? Because yep. I've watched them later in life as I knew you kind of grow up. But thank right. you for that. Thank you for them. Thank you for their service. Thank you. I know you and your husband, you had to have an impact on them to serve their country. We are proud, yeah, yeah. very proud of them. Their, their dad's a Marine. You know, once Marine, always Marine. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, their yeah. dad's a Marine, so that was a huge impact on their decision. Excellent. Okay, mm -hmm. so much of we've got left to do, mm -hmm. but so much we've done together, and yes. I'm so excited to partner with you on everything hydrogen from this point on. As am Trace, I. 
Thank you. Thank you. So all of these interviews that we have conducted have been sponsored by the people behind me. The first one is the Grid Edge Conference and Exposition, which takes place in April 2023 in San Diego. The IEEE PES Grid Edge Conference and Exposition has been a long time in the making. This will be our first one, uh, and it will be a delight. I can already tell you that we've had more papers, more panelists than we could possibly hold, and the uh, conference itself is going to be brilliant. The the second organization sponsoring us is H2Scan. H2Scan is ubiquitous in the transformer industry as the best. It's kind of like Intel, it's inside. H2Scan is a hydrogen sensing technology that is patented, that has been around for the last 20 years. It really came on strong as transformer hydrogen became a problem, DGA recognized by IEEE. And I just thank the people at H2Scan. They are also in electrolyzers, fuel cells, battery storage, but hydrogen safety is incredibly important. They're in refining and processing, so H2Scan, thank you. Lastly, RE+, we are at the Renewable Energy Plus Conference and Exposition, and as we close this one out, I wanna thank them for allowing us to conduct these interviews here, for allowing us to be part of their incredible conference. It's been enormous. There've been 27,000 people that have attended this conference, and you can tell the energy, the excitement that's taking place within the renewables industry, so thank you, RE+. It's been a delight to do these interviews, and I hope you've enjoyed them.